Hello and welcome. So a couple of days ago I put out a video in the Marceau with lots of long range HE spam and I said that you can do the same thing in the Kleber. So today we're doing the same thing in the Kleber. And uh, remember how I ran into an island in that one? Well, I guess if we're doing the same thing, then we'll have to run into an island as well. Sadly, there, is, there are no icebergs here, but this giant rock will have to do. So we're playing on the map uh, Tears of the Cruisers, and uh, actually I don't think the cru Cruisers will be tearing very much this game. However, it is kind of unfortunate that it is epicenter mode because half of our destroyers aren't actually destroyers. You see, we only have a gearing as our destroyer. But luckily we did manage to get a few salvos in on the opposing Shima case uh, to soften her up so that our gearing can actually do her job at some point. Haha, <laughs> fat chance of that happening, considering it's a random battle. Okay, okay, M maybe it'll happen. I, I never actually paid attention to that. Oh, and we actually found the enemy Jiring as well. So, this, considering it's super close range, I think it's kind of bad news for that gearing. So, we're absolutely going to reload booster and try to deal as much damage to this gearing as possible. I... I don't think that gearing had a very good time there. I mean, I've done... Almost 13k damage on both of the enemy DD so far. It's only a few minutes into the match. I think I'm quite happy with that. Now back to our uh, regularly scheduled long range HG spam. I mean, I have 16.3 kilometer range, so I might as well take advantage of that. So in terms of captain skills, I went with priority target, uh, last stand, survivability expert, advanced firing training, IFHE, uh, basic firing training and expert marksman but I've since decided that maybe this isn't the greatest build and I've actually dropped IFHE and take and I took um, demolition expert instead or adrenaline rush I think it's demolition expert though pretty sure because I noticed that a lot of the damage I deal actually comes from fire so adding a flat 20 ish percent to fire chance is actually pretty nice and no IFHE also means I get another 10% flat fire chance. I say 10% compared to how much you normally have. You see, with IFHE, the Kleber has 10% fire chance. So, I don't think it's a good idea to try to chase that minute. Oh, hey, I found another island, but I swear, this island moves, okay? It wasn't there when I last looked, okay? I mean, you can't blame this on me, okay? This island teleported in the way. Well, I guess she actually sailed in the way, but same thing, really. And now that we've extricated ourselves from that moving island, we can uh, finally, maybe, start dealing some damage to battleships. Because we have found this unsuspecting Montana. Actually, I do think she's not quite unsuspecting, but uh, I don't think she can do much to us, and she will simply have to take this. I am slowing down, because I see no reason not to slow down at the moment. I am gonna start moving because I found a Worcester. Now, I do have IFHE here, which is actually quite useful against this Worcester because it does mean I can pen the armor of the Worcester and I can deal a lot of damage to her. IFHE on the Kleber is nice because you are a big threat to cruisers. Without that, the cruisers can more or less laugh you off. However, you also have AP, which is fairly effective on the Kleber, and perhaps that. AP might actually end up being more useful in quite a few situations. Anyway, we've chased off that Worcester. Well, actually, I guess the Worcester chased us off, but... Uh, details, okay? Now, we're gonna engage this Yamato, and we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna chill over here. My acceleration is so fast that if somebody actually starts firing at me, I can probably avoid most of that salvo. And, uh, I mean, nobody seems to even be looking at me, so I don't even have to worry about that. Somebody does lock onto me once in a while, but I don't know what I should make of that, because they're not actually firing their guns. Meanwhile, we're trying to get fires on the Yamato. I do try to use my reload booster somewhat early, for two reasons. Number one, uh, games tend to snowball, which means that putting out more damage early, and I think, ends up being more important. And number two, uh, if you die early, I mean, you kind of waste your reload boosters that you don't use, right? So you might as well try to use them. Now, since this is epicenter and since we only have one destroyer, that is um, 
literally on the edge of the map. Um, that is, we don't have any destroyers at all. Points-wise, we're not looking so hot. It's uh, 390 points for us, for 740 on the red team. And we're actually equal in ships, so that's not great. Oh, somebody actually fired on me. It's the Montana. Oh no, she did like a thousand damage. Let's just move away, I suppose. Eventually, we will have to move. I also left a little present for this Yamato. I'm not quite certain whether these torpedoes can reach the Yamato, but I mean... Let's hope for the best, I suppose. Even if they don't, I mean, I'll just continue spamming some HE at her once I clear the island. Points-wise, though, we're actually not looking quite as bad because we have a responsible battleship and a Worcester. And by the battleship, I mean the Yamato that is literally sailing into the middle of the map, which is quite amazing. And we actually have a Moskva that's somewhere near the middle, too. So those two are actually praiseworthy. I just kind of didn't realize that at the time as I was playing, so I kind of forgot to uh, compliment them. Anyway, we're going to be able to deal with this Yamato fairly easily, or I suppose the friendly Yamato will be able to deal with this Yamato. And now we will simply continue shelling that Montana. It's nine minutes into the match, we're at 108k damage with our HE spam and two torpedoes, and I guess we should be quite happy with this. And there are another four battleships left on the map to farm, which is great. By the way, the enemy does still have both of their destroyers. I mean, we have both of our destroyers as well, except one of us is not a destroyer, which is me. I'm more of a glorified cruiser, a really fast cruiser. It seems that the red Montana is in trouble soon, because Yamato is going to blap her away. Pretty certain of it, I mean. She is so close, there is just no avoiding it, and uh, wait, actually it was a Montana that blapped her away. And here I make friends with some torpedoes. I tried to slow down with a speed boost and whatnot, but unfortunately the torpedoes approach me at uh, light speed and it was impossible for me to avoid them. Luckily though, my ship did not explode. I found the enemy Shima at 200 HP, hopefully that one salvo I fired on her will be able to finish her. Who are we kidding, that salvo is gonna miss and I'm gonna be quite sad because Shima gets away with 200 HP. Oh well, it happens. Somebody else will deal with it. Okay, I'm a cruiser this game and I'm playing on tiers of the cruiser so I am tearing up right now, okay? We got a nice fire on this Grossakofest, so let's continue. Oh, Yamato is pushing. Well, I guess we're... Eh, yeah, Yamato is not a good target since she's fighting that Moskva. Moskva's prob probably gonna blap her away or they're gonna kiss, who knows. Actually, no, they missed one another. Which probably does put the advantage in the Moskva's book. So we'll continue shelling this Grosokov fest and uh, hopefully get some fires. Since we only have five fires, despite the fact that we have over 250 shells. What is this? Fire chance. It's a fire chance for ants. I mean, if I had Demolition Expert, I bet I would have like 25 fires by now, okay? 25 fires! Also, it seems like actually complaining about fires helps, because I just got two fires rather quickly, which is very nice. And uh, hopefully that Grossakofest takes a lot of damage. I mean, we're only at 140k so far, so we need more of that. Ooh, a wither! That's very nice. I don't really know. I guess I do have to fire HE. The Kofest is angled and I am fairly far away, so AP probably wouldn't do much at this point. So we'll simply have to hope for more fires with this HE. Oh, and the fires actually ran out, or Chidamakon. Either way, we will try to set more fires. Because fires are your friend! Unless you're that Grosso Kofest, in which case. They probably are not your friend. Oh, Shidamekon. Okay, I mean, I guess that answers whether Shidamekon earlier. So the next fire we get is gonna run away and that will probably spell the end of that GK. Because uh, there are two Zaos behind me also spamming her with Ichi. Jesus Christ. <laughs> tears of the cruisers, more like tears of the battleships at this point, huh? We are four, at 425 points, the red team is at 800 points. 
I started a fire on the GK, so I'm gonna swap targets to the Thunderer, because I don't think I can get another fire going on the GK, and I do think the uh, Zaz will finish her off. Instead, it's probably better to simply try to uh, set more fires on the Thunderer instead. Yeah, that GK is going down. And there she goes. Also gonna lock the outer cap zone, because there are no friendly ships actually that are on this outer cap zone, so the red team kept taking points. But I mean, ships-wise, we're at a significant advantage, so all we have to do is make sure that they don't win by taking over the thousand point limit, and then we should have this in the bag. I don't quite realize that I was the one locking the uh, outer cap zone, so I do have to fix that in a moment, or eventually. I mean, so far it's kind of okay, but if this goes unchecked, the points do add up quite quickly, and if we lose a few too many ships, it can end up going pretty poorly for us. I still have a rail outpost I should use at some point. I'm just unsure whether this Thunder is a good choice here. Engine boost deactivated. Let's just chill over here. I mean, we can do the same thing we've been doing before, that is, slow down and simply sit there and shell the Thundera. Because that should be quite nice until somebody starts... Okay, somebody is already firing at me and they actually did a lot of damage. Damn. I think it's the... Oh no! I think it's... The, is that a Smolensk? Or Worcester or something? Damn, they actually broke my engine. This is... This is... This has become a difficult situation. I have 2000 HP. This is... Uh, this would be great if I had Adrenaline Rush, but I do not have Adrenaline Rush, which means that this is... simply unfortunate. Well, anyway, I believe in my ability to dodge shells, so we're gonna continue shelling this Thunderer, because damage isn't going to farm itself, is it? I have one more speed boost left, but it's still not up yet, and damn, those cruisers are persistent. Maybe it's actually the Yoshino that has been firing at me, or probably both even. Oh yeah, it's not a Worcester, it's a Smolensk. Jesus. Can't read the minimap. Well, I can now. Come on, Thunderer, why won't you burn? I know you're Thunderer, but can't you be a little burnerer today? Okay, okay, I'm gonna disengage for a little bit of the Thunder. Actually, this wasn't entirely on purpose. I simply got just too far away. And now I'll just head back into the cap zone, just in case, and uh, I guess she is gonna get behind an island soon enough, and we can simply take advantage of that, if somebody actually spots her, but if, you know, if nobody spots her, we'll simply win by points. I've already done a fair bit of damage, so it's not too bad if I don't deal too much more. But the Thunder is back again, so we get to deal some more free damage. Excellent! And at this point we are in a points lead, at the points lead, I don't think this is a winnable game for them anymore. They might have a Smolensk and a Thundera, but that HE is not gonna save them today. Ooh, a fire! Excellent! Oh, I think that was my. Those were my, the last shells that could get there. These, yeah, could not go quite over the island. And now we eventually end up taking the cap, and the Smolensk gets sunk as well. And through that, we win the game. What a nice game! See, told you, Clebet can do the same stuff as the Marceau. 210k damage, 13 fires, 508 shell hits. 296 non-penetrations, despite the fact that I have IFHE, so maybe IFHE really isn't that worth it. I do compliment our Montana, because she managed to rack up six ships. That is quite amazing. I also compliment the Smolensk. I know, I know it's a Smolensk, but still, I mean, he got almost 1700 base XP on a loss. That is compliment worthy. And wow, so I did the same damage with fires as I did with actual alpha damage. Damn.
It's like 250 damage difference. Actually less than that. Wow. But I mean, I actually landed over half of the shells I fired. Despite the fact that I did so much long range spam. Here is the commander skills I used. Like I said, priority target, last stand, survivability expert, advanced firing training, IFHE, ba basic firing training, and expert marksman. I've since swapped it around, I've dropped IFHE, I've taken the militian expert, and I took IFA actually. I mean, after all, if half of my damage literally comes from fires, maybe setting more fires is actually more useful than uh, doing slightly more penetration to the one Worcester I fire at. So, let's take a speedy recap of the uh, match that I just played. Keep in mind that uh, sped up like this, the turrets don't actually track what I'm aiming at. This is almost therapeutic. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Martin Wolf. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.